Have you ever wondered what really goes on behind the closed doors of your seemingly ordinary neighbors? In the quiet town of Bakersfield, California, in the scorching summer of 2003, a shocking event unfolded that would forever scar the hearts of its residents. It's a story that grips the soul and shakes the very foundations of trust and family bonds. This is the case of Vincent Brothers, a man whose life took a dark and sinister turn, leaving behind a trail of sorrow, suspicion, and ultimately, death. In this captivating video, we're going to explore the mesmerizing yet horrific case of Vincent Brothers. Get ready to explore the dark secrets, shocking revelations, and the tragic events that unfolded in a peaceful California town. We'll uncover the unsettling details of a crime that shattered the very core of a neighborhood. Hold on to your seats and get ready to witness how even the most seemingly ordinary lives can hide the darkest of secrets. Let's get started. In the quiet town of Bakersfield, California, there was a man named Vincent Brothers. To everyone outside, he looked like a regular school teacher. Nothing special. But under his normal appearance was a really scary secret that would shock the town. Vincent lived in a peaceful place where everyone knew each other. He taught at a local school, and people trusted him with their kids. He seemed like a friendly neighbor, but deep down, Vincent had a dark side he had hidden for years. On the warm summer day of July 6th in the year 2003, a woman by the name of Joni Harper, accompanied by her dear children and her loving mother, gathered together to attend their cherished Sunday morning church service. After the uplifting service, they decided to treat themselves to a delightful meal at a nearby restaurant, savoring good food and pleasant company. Following their satisfying lunch, they returned to their cozy home, all of them feeling the need for a restful nap before the evening service at their beloved church. Inside their welcoming home, Joni and her children nestled into one bedroom, sharing in moments of quiet relaxation while Joni's mother, seeking solitude, found solace in another bedroom at the opposite end of their humble home. As the day progressed, little did they know that an unexpected and unsettling event was about to disrupt their peaceful day. Regrettably, the situation took a heart-wrenching turn as this unwelcome visitor, armed with a small yet foreboding 22 caliber pistol, stealthily infiltrated their peaceful home through the back door, which led to their once serene backyard. In a cruel twist of fate, this intruder inflicted unspeakable harm upon Joni, her innocent children, and her beloved mother. Their lives were tragically cut short, and their home, once a place of love and laughter, became a place of indescribable sorrow and loss. On the following Tuesday morning, a close friend named Kelsey Spann began to sense that something was terribly wrong, since nobody was picking up her phone. A growing unease settled in her heart, and she couldn't shake the feeling that her dear friends, Joni and her family, were in distress. Driven by worry and the bonds of friendship, Kelsey decided to take action. Kelsey approached the side door of the house with a key Joni had given her for emergencies, hoping to find comfort and assurance behind it. She was shocked to discover that the door was still locked from the inside due to an obstructing factor that she was unable to detect. Unconcerned, she walked around the house looking for another entrance to the place she knew so well. A small ray of hope emerged when Kelsey discovered a sliding glass door that, to her relief, stood unlocked. She cautiously stepped inside, her heart heavy with anxiety. As the clock neared seven in the morning, Kelsey's mounting worry left her with no choice but to dial the solemn numbers of 911, urgently seeking assistance from the authorities. Joni Harper, a loving mother, and her innocent children became victims of a senseless and unspeakable tragedy. Joni was lying face down on the bed, where she would have been dreaming and taking moments of peace, with the wounds of unspeakable violence. Three ruthless gunshots to her head, and two more that sliced through her arm, had put an end to her frail existence. Seven harsh stabs had further hurt her motionless form, adding to the misery and leaving a chilling reminder of the cruelty of that terrible day. Marshall Harper, her adorable six-week-old infant boy, had been discovered nearby, tucked under a pillow in a final heartbreaking embrace with his mother. 
His little back was the target of a terrible bullet that ended a life that was only beginning. Little Marques Harper, just four years old, lay on the same bed, his once vibrant eyes now forever fixed in an eternal stare. A gunshot wound to the right side of his head told a tragic tale, and the sight of his fingertip, bitten to the bone, spoke of the sheer terror that must have gripped him when he came face to face with the incomprehensible evil that had invaded their home. At the foot of Joni's bed, two-year-old Lindsay Harper, an innocent soul, had met a similarly cruel fate, a gunshot to her back in the place where she should have found safety and warmth, shattered the dreams of a life full of promise. Ernestine Harper, Joni's mother, had displayed extraordinary courage in her final moments. In the hallway where she had valiantly tried to confront the intruder, she bore the marks of two devastating gunshot wounds to her face. It was something that the city of Bakersfield had never dealt with before. It uh, really rattled uh, the population. Beside her, a pistol lay as silent witness to her fierce determination to protect her loved ones, even in the face of overwhelming danger. A sobering reminder of the vulnerability of life and the depths of cruelty that may destroy the value of a family's home can be found in this terrible picture of loss and suffering. The former husband of Joni Harper, Vincent E. Brothers, was immediately the target of suspicion. In order to inform Brothers about his family, police located him at his mother's house in North Carolina. Despite being the sole person accused, he had left four days before the murder, and the police were unable to challenge his alibi. A Bakersfield neighbor would eventually come forward to claim that they had spotted Vincent near the Harper home near the time of the murders and rental records of a car that showed Brothers had rented in Ohio displayed that he had put 5,400 miles on it, which was well enough to get from Ohio to California and back. An unexpected twist emerged as entomologist director Lynn Kimsey entered the scene. With her expertise and keen eye, she uncovered a vital clue that would cast a new light on the unfolding mystery. Kimsey made a startling discovery, bug parts, remnants from species typically found exclusively west of the Rocky Mountains. Among these insect clues were the remains of a sizable grasshopper, a distinctive paper wasp, and a pair of enigmatic true bugs. Each of these insects held a piece of the puzzle. Kimsey, with her deep knowledge of entomology, was quick to point out the significance of these findings. The large grasshopper, though typically seen on the Great Plains and the eastern slope of the Rockies, had somehow found its way far from its usual habitat. The paper wasp, whose primary territory centered around the 100th meridian, was also an unexpected presence. Equally perplexing were the true bugs, insects that typically called Southern California, Arizona, and Utah their home. The presence of these insects in the midst of this tragedy raised questions that needed answers. Vincent had initially tried to prove his innocence with receipts showing purchases made in North Carolina on the day of the murders. However, this alibi fell apart when investigators discovered that Vincent's brother, Melvin, had been using Vincent's card and signing his name without permission. At first, Melvin denied his involvement when questioned, but he later came clean, admitting that he had done so at Vincent's request. Vincent Brothers was a well-liked citizen in the Bakersfield, California area. He was a respected Christian family man with a bachelor's degree from Norfolk State University and a master's in education from California State University. In 1987, he became a substitute teacher and became vice principal in 1995 at Fremont Elementary. Joni and Vincent's relationship had its fair share of challenges. When Joni gave birth to Marques Juan in 1998, Vincent was notably absent during this important moment. Their journey together led them to marry in 2000, but sadly, their union only lasted a month before they separated. And once again, when Joni welcomed Lindsay Michelle into the world, Vincent was not there to share in the joyous occasion. Their marriage ultimately came to an end in 2001 when it was annulled. The reasons behind the annulment were complex. Joni cited fraud as she was unaware of Vincent's prior marriages, while Vincent pointed to irreconcilable differences. However, despite the ups and downs in their relationship, family members and friends could see that Joni deeply loved Vincent. 
She was willing to weather the storms and uncertainties in the hope of building a loving family together. In 2003, a ray of happiness arrived when baby Marshall was born, and this time both brothers were present to share in the joy. Remarkably, Joni and Vincent found their way back to each other, remarrying in the same year. Their story, marked by twists and turns, was a testament to the enduring power of love and family bonds. Although suspicion was initially set on Vincent, he was not arrested until the April of 2004. And since the attention from the media was so intense, his trial was postponed to 2007. His trial began on February 22nd of that year. The prosecution alleged that Vincent's motive for the killings was greed, since he carried out extramarital relationships and wanted to free himself of the burden of caring for his growing family. On May 15, 2007, Vincent Brothers was found guilty of five counts of first-degree murder and a special circumstance of multiple murders. He was sentenced to death by lethal injection by Judge Michael Bush. On the same day the judge made this ruling, September 28, 2007, one of the only surviving members of the family, Vincent's estranged daughter, Margaret Kern, who was 18, had denounced him in the courtroom. She stated that she was resigning from the brother's family and that as soon as she walked out of the room, she would forever be Margaret Kern. The trial of Vincent Brothers shook the entire town of Bakersfield to its core. The once beloved family man was now a convicted murderer, and the community was left grappling with the horrific tragedy that had unfolded after this event. However, the emotional experience of the surviving family members was what really caught the essence of this heartbreaking narrative not the courtroom drama or legal proceedings. In the end, justice was served, but it could never fully heal the wounds inflicted on Joni Harper's family and the community of Bakersfield. The legacy of this case is a stark and sobering one, a reminder that evil can wear many faces and the bonds of family can be tested beyond imagination. The case of Vincent Brothers will forever remain a horrific chapter in the history of crime a tale of betrayal, brutality, and the resilience of the human spirit in the face of unspeakable tragedy.